ready for some magic! Welcome, Pac-415 Scouts, to yet another great year in scouting. Though we are in the middle of unprecedented times, we as Pac-415 are going to catch the moment and have a lot of fun and a magical year. Especially with our friend to kick it off, Magic Mike Stroud! Please put your hands together for him, he can hear you through the internet. Hi, Scouts. Hello, Pac-415. I have some special magic just for you. It's a magic palette. And today we're going to take the colors from this palette, put them on this paintbrush by magic, and transfer them over to this painting of the Boy Scouts of America, founded in 1930 during the Golden Age of Magic. So watch all of the colors on this palette. Wiggle your fingers, concentrate on loading the brush with these colors and sending them over to the painting. Now, if you use the power of your imagination and think of all of the great values that the scouts bring to the world, dun 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 dun! Give yourselves a big hand for you have done the magic, the magic of scouting. And now, just for your kickoff, Magic Mike is going to teach you how to become a magician yourself! You guys ready for some magic? I'm going to teach you some. Of course, all magic is steeped in secrecy, but we are experiencing a lot of surprises today, especially the fact that I'm going to show you one of my favorite mysteries. A purple piece of yarn. Not just one. I've got a couple down here. This is my favorite color. Can you see both pieces of yarn here, Magic Genie? Yes. Would you please pull out your hand? I'm going to place both pieces in your hand, and I'd like you to just close your hand. Oh, let's make sure all the ends go in there, too. I haven't done anything sneaky yet, but watch. Open your hand. Whoa. And notice both pieces have become one piece. Now the explanation for this amazing yarn trick is very simple. You need one specific thing, any kind of yarn with an equal number of strands. Four to six strands is best. This yarn I got at a local craft store and I counted the number of strands in it simply by taking a little test of the yarn and untwisting it. You see, yarn is made up of several strands that are twisted together. If you twist in one direction, it gets tighter. If you twist in the other direction, it gets looser. And when it gets loose like this, you can see how many strands there are. You see, we have four different colors that make up that, that purple color. And you can see there are four strands. You see that? Now, you want to go toward the middle of the yarn, find the four strands, and start to pull the yarn apart to about the size of a silver dollar. About that big. Now, here is the magic of this yarn. All you do is you twist each end like this and kind of pinch the ends. Now, you've created an illusion. It just looks like a couple of pieces of yarn overlapping each other. It looks like this, and the audience thinks they're seeing two ends. Unbeknownst to them, these two ends are actually just part of the middle of the yarn. So you set the trick up so that the ends are sticking out, the false ends, and you ask somebody to hold their hand out. Thank you, Jeannie. You place the fake ends in their hand, and make sure when they close their hand, it's covered up. Now the next thing you do is pull on the ends here. 
Jeannie's going to open her hand so you can see what happens inside it. Because when you pull the yarn, those fake ends that we made end up going back inside the yarn. You pull the yarn tight and you destroy any evidence and it just looks like one piece. Now you're doing magic. There's always an opportunity to give somebody a rose. And you can be cheap about it too. This one's made out of a napkin. Would you like to learn a cool little craft project? You can also do magic with a rose like this. Look, I put it in my hand, I blow on it, and it appears to float in the air. I hold it with my thumbs like this. I cover it with my hands and blow on it. And look, it floats in the air. A paper rose I can give as a gift to Magic Genie. Thank you. I'm going to show you how to make one of these. I got a particularly large piece of napkin here. They come in all different sizes. You can use the square ones you find at restaurants if you're ever allowed back in the restaurant. <laughs> all you do is take a piece of napkin and you roll it into a loose tube. A loose tube about halfway, just like this. Now, you take one of the corners and you're going to fold it up to about halfway along the length of the tube. So a corner is sticking out a little bit. Once you've done that, you simply squeeze here underneath that corner and twist, twist, twist to begin to make the base of the rose. Now right above this little corner, you pinch and twist, 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 until you get to a few inches from the top of the remainder of the paper. As you can see, it's starting to look like a rose already. But we're going to neaten this up a little bit, bring this around, going to push inside a little bit, give it a little bit more shape and crunch the top. Twist it really tight at the base there so it doesn't come undone. Ooh, it's really starting to look good now. Now I'm going to make this thorn. This is gonna be a thorn of the rose. I'm gonna make that a little smaller to make it look a little more realistic. So all this has to be really tight. It's okay if this is twisted one direction opposite from this one. The main thing is it has to be twisted really tight at the base there. The thorn pokes out and you have yourself a magic rose. Wow! Watch carefully as the rose appears to float. Yeah. How does he do it? Now I've taken a trick that we usually do with magic wands or pencils or rulers or any long cylindrical object and I've simply done it with a paper rose. You hold the rose like this and you appear to hold your wrist to steady your hand and then you slowly bring your fingers out and it looks like it's floating. Amazing. But what I've really done is once I grab my wrist, I swing my finger out and push it against the palm of my hand. Believe it or not, people aren't concentrating on what's right in front of them, the fact that one of the fingers is missing because they're looking at the rose. So after you spread your hand wide open and make it look like it's floating for just a moment, you grab the rose and you swing your finger back without letting them see it and then show the rose. Oh. Now the second version I did, it looks like I simply put my hands around the rose like this and grab it with my thumbs. I grab it with my thumbs first, that's a little tricky, and then I bring my hands around like this. When I slowly remove my thumbs, the rose not only floats, it can go back and forth, more forward, before I catch it. This one's really fun. It's a little harder to do. Once you push your thumbs on the rose like this, 
It looks like you're just bringing your hands together like this, but you're really taking your two middle fingers and ducking them in as you put your hands together. As I do that, I am gripping the rose with my two middle fingers. So from the other angle, it looks like this. Now that I have the rows, and I've put my hands together here so they can't see that gap, you don't want it to look like this. You want to push your knuckles together so they can't see it. And just like the other technique, they're not counting your fingers. They don't know two of them are missing and doing your secret work. Now you slowly remove your thumbs, and all you have to do is move your fingers back and forth like this, and it looks just like it's floating. When it's time for the effect to end, and you pretend it's floating in toward the person, you just take your fingers apart and say, that was a close one. The magic rose. To make the rose wilt, just pinch it with your thumb and first finger to apparently make it fall over, then squeeze it back. Now, a matter of perception. Watch carefully. I'd like to show you something very interesting about a die. How many sides does it have? What's that? You Six. And the, and you and the red shirt. Six. Okay, in the chat room somebody said there were nine sides to a die. What? Yeah, but you know that you can't believe everything you read in a chat room or a comment. Well, let's take a look here. There's one dot, two spots, three spots, three sides, that's four sides, that's five sides, and six sides, and seven sides, <laughs> and eight sides. What? I'll be darned if there aren't nine sides. Wow! Well, you learn something every day. I know you want to see a magic rabbit, and you want to see more magic. Are you ready for more? Okay, watch. <laughs> There's more. Now I'm going to show you how to do more magic today. What you need is something uh, that you might find around the house, a very common everyday object. I happen to have bought this roll for a thousand dollars back in March when it was very rare. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to make some of this magical material appear. Boy, I hope you guys are on a roll for magic now. <laughs> roll the tape. Here's the tape that we're going to need for this project. Some skizzers. I say skizzers because I don't know how to say scissors. <laughs> and you need not one but two rolls of the, the, the middle part of this mysterious paper, whatever it's called. So with one roll, you cut it in half. Snip, 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 right in half. Then you roll one end of it to be smaller than the other end, and you're going to secure that part with tape. So you roll this to be a little bit smaller than the other end, secure that with tape. And then you put one inside the other, and then you adjust this until the end matches in diameter to this end right here. So it'll be uh, about like that. There we go. So now what we've done is to create a little bit of space in between these two tubes. So it's just one tube inside the other. This one's been turned into a cone a little bit, and this one's round. We're going to take another piece of tape, Woo! and, a big cap of the, music and band, the end that's flush here, I'm going to awesome. very carefully Thank you for put the tape all the way around the inside. Oh, I didn't get quite enough there, so I'll get a little bit more. It's important that you use colored tape, not clear tape. You'll see why in just a moment. Next, taking scissors, one, two, three, four, five, make about six cuts all the way around so you can fold these. 
we're just taping that extra cylinder inside the outer one. So here's a special amount of magic for the year 2020. I'm going to put one other strip of tape on the outside to make it look a little nicer and professional. And then I'm going to take one more strip of tape and put it on the other side of the tube so it matches, so it just looks like a decoration. Although its main function is to hide this double edge. Now you've created what is known in magic as a phantom tube or a ooh, ghost tube. You can show there's nothing in this tube. But because you've created an extra little space back here, you can put in one, two, Magic Genie, what comes after two? Three. Very good, you could be in my class. And three. All right, now with your nimble little fingers, make sure that doesn't poke out of the edge there. Don't show this side, obviously, but look, from this side, there's nothing in the tube. A snap of my fingers, however, I can reach inside and pull out precious pieces of paper. One, two, three. Welcome to 2020 and a little bit of special magic for you. I'm gonna keep my distance from that trick. And now something from the Klutz Book of Magic. While you are preparing for the next magic, let me tell you Michael Stroud has created two editions of the Klutz Book of Magic, as well as a book of card trickery. You can also learn magic by reading books. Want to join our fan club? You send a self-addressed stamped envelope. Oh, hey, Magic Mike here again. And I uh, hope everybody is staying safe during this very strange time. It's an excellent time to practice sleight of hand. All you need for this one is a plastic bag or a paper bag, or get one from around the house. I happen to have one from my bunny rabbit's favorite restaurant. I hop. Remember restaurants, everybody? Oh, you know what? One time somebody said, Magic Mike, you're not the Magic Mike I was thinking of. And I said, oh, you're probably right. There is a robot called Magic Mike. There's actually two. And this is part of my robot collection. Don't forget, I'm also a robot. And now for the invisible ball in the bag miracle. Using your plastic or paper bag, you reach into the bag and pull out one of these. An invisible ball. Can you see that? No, of course not. It's invisible. But you can hear it. Watch. You can hear it and see it lands in the bag. Under the leg. Behind the back. Here, take it. I'm going to throw it to you. Good, Genie. Toss it in the bag. Yes! Out there in YouTube land. Ready? You catch it. Toss it into the bag. Excellent! One last time. Oh, you in the blue shirt. Take it. Toss it into the bag. Guess I should have picked the person in the red shirt. Anyway, this is a really fun one to do. It's a snap. The secret is a snap. The, the secret is you snap. You snap your fingers by pushing your thumb against your ring finger and second finger to make that sound, kids. That's right. If you can snap, give me a thumbs up. In fact, give me a like. And don't forget to sub. Now for the magic secret. Now all you do is hold the bag with the same hand that snaps and it creates an illusion that something is actually landing in the bag. As long as the timing is good with the other hand, it should be perfect. Lots of practice. Because if it's too slow, it'll look like this. No es bueno. And if it's too fast, it'll look like this. So practice, practice, and you'll have a lot of fun with this bag trick. Ooh, 
hand sanitizer, something very important in today's age. And to show you that I'm a real magician and I made a prophecy some time ago, I developed this trick over 20 years ago. It's called the Rising Scroll of Charmin. I sold quite a few of these to other magicians on our lecture tour. And right now, I'm going to show you the prophecy I made 20 years ago, the magic of toilet paper. <laughs> yes, and as you become more familiar with your favorite brand, you learn a lot about this mysterious and valuable commodity. <laughs> In fact, I'd like to give you some tickets to my next show. These are very expensive, by the way. <laughs> People were waiting in line for them. <laughs> and if you take a piece of paper and get to know it with a little bit of magic, you can actually hypnotize it. Uh, you are becoming sweet. Stiff as a boy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's if. It's as if. It's as if. Excuse me. It's as if the TP is possessed by some invisible force or spirit. Whoa! 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 Hold on a moment. <laughs> this thing is possessed. Oh, did I mention? Don't squeeze the shaman. Or he'll disappear. Whoa. A little something special for 2020. Stay safe. Well, we hope you enjoyed the magic for Cub Scout Pack 415. Have a wonderful year of scouting.